Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My experience and why I feel like I'm entitled to share with you how to do this is because I got straight A stars in my A levels. I did maths, physics and chemistry and I think I'm entitled to share it with you. And I use these tips today in my university degree. I'm studying mechanical engineering. So let's get straight into it. How to learn it by yourself. So um, the first tip I did was I was researching how to learn and study and I came across Anki. And Anki is amazing because it's pretty much this software where it consolidates active recall and spaced repetition and organization in one place. And for me, I just thought it was a no-brainer and I'm going to use that for my GCSEs and my A-levels. So that's what I did. So I mastered Anki. I've got a couple of videos in my channel to teach you how to do it and like tutorials and stuff. And then I made my flashcards before my lessons using online textbooks, um, like the CGP guide online and using the specification points. So I went through the specification guide, I made a flashcard or three flashcards on each specification point. And then I used the textbooks and multiple different textbooks as sources when I went through those flashcards. And the brilliant thing about Anki is when you do an Anki, you can have beautiful images just in two seconds by using like the screenshot function. And what's brilliant also is that you can use this app called OCR Capture. It's where you screenshot a piece of text and it converts it into um, text for you. So when you paste it into Anki, you've got it like a massive paragraph just converted into text. Why this is important is because when you're doing past paper questions and you're looking up like keyword, when you put that in the browse function of Anki, you can pull up the flashcards that are related to that question. And I found that so important with consolidating and linking all the knowledge together. The main step I did to teach myself my whole of A-levels and GCSEs is YouTube. Um, like I'm giving, sharing my knowledge and my experience here, there are a million teachers out there sharing their time, literally going through the whole of the your specification for you. And I did, like, there's like YouTube, it's like Allery Chemistry for YouTube, um, like for Physics Online and loads of ones for Maths. So I pretty much just went through YouTube, watched those, did loads of examples on my own, made sure I was doing it actively and not just passively watching it. So how I did that, and I wish I did it earlier because I've only started doing this in my degree this year, is that what's brilliant about Anki is that you can add the YouTube video into your Anki. So you can do it by just pressing the share, embed, then copy and pasting it over into Anki, and then you've got your YouTube video in your notes. And this step would be so much helpful for me if I was watch this two years ago when I was doing my A-levels and GCSEs because I watched a lot of YouTube videos. And I wish I could when I was reviewing my Anki cards and I forgot the understanding, I could just watch the YouTube video again and it would be so much easier. Or if you're doing A-levels and you're studying A-level physics, maths or chemistry, um, I've got my Anki flashcards or you can use anyone else's Anki flashcards, like a set flashcards that have gone through the specification or a student like me who's gone through the specification and got a good grade. You can use their resources like I share in the description on my Etsy. Um, you can use their resources, go through a YouTube video, review the flashcards, and then um, do past paper questions. So it literally it will skip the step of making the flashcards. You can edit them to however you want. You can edit them, add pictures, add all this other stuff, but try and look out there if someone's already done it. I'm just one step in front of you if you're doing your A-levels, but it doesn't mean that I'm any better than you, and it does mean that you could do exactly the same as I've done. And then third one is make a list of the hard specification points. Because ultimately, if you're going over it on yourself, by yourself, the first time a topic, there'll be some things that you just have no bloody clue about. Like, I remember going through physics and going through the double slit experiments and stuff like that. And I was like, dual particle effect? Why is a wave acting like a particle? So I made a note of that. And then I used the lesson productively to actually help my teacher explain it to me. So this leads on to the next question. How to use your lessons then as revision? So this was incredibly important for me because because I went through all the topics before the lessons, when I went into the lesson, it was like revision for me. It was brilliant because I was reviewing the topics and the information again. So it was the second time I'd seen it. So I was already a step ahead of everyone else in my class because I could go and jump to the questions that were the hardest. So I would look at my list of hard questions and I would literally just fire them at my teacher, collaborate, learn it together, um, really actively try and make the most of the lesson and make the most of the teacher's time. And most of the time, if they're really, really hard questions, your teacher might not have a clue either. But what's fun about it is that you'll work together to find the solution. And I found with the hardest things like physics, my teacher was amazing, she was incredible. And a lot of the time in the exam, I found I was looking not just when I was reviewing my Anki flashcards, which I did every day, I was looking back experiences of when I asked that question. And I think also 
learning is not just about regurgitating flashcards and all this other stuff, which really helps. It's also about collaborating and finding experiences where you can memorize it quicker and using things like mnemonics and people because we're much easier to relate our memory to things like objects than just random regurgitated information. So that's another thing that's amazing about Anki is because you can just put like a donkey into a flashcard and like relate that piece of like text that you need to memorize into something like an image that's kind of more relatable to your brain. So yeah, that's how my brain works. I just like images. And um, when I've done these first steps, make the flashcards, ask the teacher the question, I would get straight on to the topic questions. I like doing my past papers in the form of exam packs with topics. So say it was physics, I do a massive exam pack on waves, try and master the wave topic, see the links in with in each question, see if they repeat themselves. And then I would edit my flashcards, make new flashcards so that I've got that deck in my Anki finalized and it's perfect. So when I review that before my mock exam, I know I'm reviewing all the past paper questions, the knowledge in the specification points, it's all in one place. And if, my God, it's relieving and it, the stress goes. I wasn't stressed for any of my exams. I don't know if it's just my personality trait. I'm just quite stoic and I focus on things inside my control, except things outside my control and have that space in between. I know I put this amount of work in, so there's nothing to worry about because there's nothing more I could have done. But yeah, let's go on to how to um, do it every day. Because if you want to teach yourself your A-levels and proper like teach yourself it all and um, memorize it and do it every day and complete your whole A-level content or your GCSE content before your lessons, you need to have a drive, you need to have an objective, you need to have a habit. And I'm going to break down those three words now. So the first one is find your drive. I read Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins and my god that was a brilliant book and I recommend it. That guy has a drive that's out of this world. And his what he plays on is that everyone is quite comfortable being normal. And I think what I love is that I want to work really hard at something and I know what I want. I want to reach my potential. I don't want to just be like everyone else. I want to reach my full academic potential, my full physical potential, because I don't want to look back and think, God had this plan for me. He had all this potential I could have been, but I didn't take advantage of those opportunities. And I don't want to look back and regret. So I'm more fearful of regret than rejection, really. So yeah, that's my waffling about drive. Be driven, not motivated. Find your why, and you'll never know. And You'll be able to bear anyhow so and then another thing that helped me is make a habit habits are things that you do every day unconsciously consciously and try and make a conscious habit and try and break a bad habit so to make you read up about this more i read atomic habits which is brilliant there's lots of other books about habits they're all great just learn about habit try and make one positive habit like a study habit or working out or anything like exercise and then it'll all compound on and you'll just be a much happier person <laughs> so yeah so i made a study, a study habit from 6 p.m to 9 p.m every night i would study for three hours every night and that's the work that it took and i would study on the weekends on different hours because i have a bit of a freedom not just vigorously time block my time make week goals so this was helpful when you were trying to bash out the number of topics from each of your subjects. So I'd have like, I would want to do two topics for each of my subjects. So I'd have to review and make flashcards for six topics in a week. And that was like my minimum. So I'd have that goal each week of, right, I need to do six topics. So then I would then make a get a day goal to try and facilitate that. Have to do almost a topic a day in those three hours at night and also I want to be reviewing it in that three hour block so it's all about breaking it down and all this other stuff and time blocking is so important I've already made a video about that if you want to talk and read more about that um, read Deep Work by Carl Newport it's really helpful it very influenced my life and um, stuff goes into stuff like removing social media which I found so helpful my mental health and everything about just growing up and being a teenager and not comparing yourself the final tip is talk less and do more I believe the more you talk about something the less it will get done so don't tell anyone about it, just do it and you'll see the results. So we've gone over how to teach yourself using Anki pretty much, how to use lessons as revision then, and then how to basically scheduling teaching yourself every day. So I hope this video helps you. If this video helps you and you get a massive grade and you get an A cell grade, think about it and don't look at that grade as the outcome, but think, wow, I've become this person that I never knew I could be and I've tried to reach that potential. So yeah, hopes it helps you gain control, avoid burnout, avoid stress before your exams, know that you've done all that you could, you've done all the work you can and I hope this helps you and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your week. Thank you very much for watching.